Okay, next up are similar triangles. Similar triangles, pretty simple. Um, the only two criteria that you have to have in order to be a similar triangle is you have to have equal angles and proportional sides. And proportional sides could actually even be the same sides as well. So for instance, um, if I have two triangles and one of them has sides of six, six, and whoop, let's say uh, ten, then my other triangle, if it has sides of 3 and 3, I know that the next side is going to have to be 5, because 10, or 5 times 2 is 10, and 3 times 2 is 6. So these two would be similar triangles, because the angles would be the same, but the sides are proportional. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at some more uh, kind of special triangles. And the two kind of special triangles you're going to run into all the time are isosceles triangles and equilateral triangles. So in an isosceles triangle, two of the sides and therefore two of the angles have to be equal to one another. So two sides and the angles that are opposite from them are equal. And in equilateral, all three sides and therefore all three angles are going to be equal. So the nice thing about an, a triangle being isosceles or equilateral is that you can use less information to find out uh, everything about the triangle, or in other words, to solve for the triangle. So for instance, in our isosceles triangle, let's say that we have one angle. We can find all the other angles. So let's say this top angle here is, uh, let's say, 20 degrees. Okay. So we have 20 degrees at the top, and we know that in an entire triangle, 180 degrees is equal to all three angles. So let's say 180 degrees is equal to x plus x, just labeling these guys x, plus 20. So then I could say that 160 degrees is equal to x plus x, or 2x, and then all you have to do is divide both sides by 2 to get your answer. Makes life really simple. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and look at the same idea with equilateral triangles. Okay, in equilateral all the sides and all the angles are equal, so if you have one angle or if you have one side, you can solve for the other two angles or the other two sides. Um, the nice thing about equilateral triangles also is that you really only have one option for the angles. Um, and that's because if all the angles are equal, then 180 would have to be equal to x plus x plus x. Again, I'm just saying x is any one of these angles. So 180 would equal 3 times x, and if you divide 180 by 3, you would get 60 degrees. So in an equilateral, you're always going to have 60 degrees for all of the angles. The difference is uh, the sides can be different. So this equilateral triangle and this one, this itty bitty one, they're going to have the same exact angles, but they'll have different sides. And actually, these two guys would be a good example of similar triangles. So if I know that uh, one of these sides is 10, then all the other sides are also going to have to be 10. Okay, the next type of triangle that we need to talk about are right triangles. And as I said earlier, when you are doing a polygon or complex figure, 3D problem, a lot of times you're going to draw in your own triangles in order to solve. You're going to be drawing in right triangles, because right triangles are the easiest to work with. One of the reasons for that would be the Pythagorean theorem. So Pythagorean Theorem only works on right triangles, so please don't try to use it on any other type of triangle. Um, but it's a way of finding the third side if you have two of them. So A and B are your legs, and C is your hypotenuse. And all you have to do is say A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So if we were to give uh, this triangle numbers associated with it, let's go ahead and say that A is 2 and b is 3, and we're trying to find what c is equal to, all we'd have to do is say 2 squared plus 3 squared is equal to c squared. So then we've got 4 plus 9 is equal to c squared. So 13 is equal to c squared. And then you would take radical 13, 
is equal to 2. So that would give you your third side. Okay. Um, they're not always going to give you, you know, a radical as an answer, especially not if you have a Pythagorean triplet. So let's go ahead and look at the triplets. So I'm just going to label them P triplets. So there are actually tons of triplets. Anything that uh, works out with a solid number actually could technically be considered a triplet. However, memorizing, you know, the infinite number of possibilities there is not going to be very time conducive, um, but knowing two of them will be helpful. So three, four, five is your first one. And then uh, your next one that you're going to want to know is five, twelve, thirteen. Now they're not always going to be really nice to you and give you a solid 3, 4, 5 or 5, 12, 13 triangle. So they'll give you similar triangles to those. So for instance, a 3, 4, 5 triangle is the same thing as a 6, 8, one second, pen. There we go, 6, 8, 10. So these things, these two, are the same. So uh, watch out for three, four, five triangles up to maybe a multiple of, of three. I've seen four once or twice, but pretty much they don't go much bigger than that. And then five, twelve, thirteens. You'll see five, twelve, thirteens, and you'll also see ten, twenty-four, twenty-sixes. But they really don't multiply it by anything bigger than two for those. So if you know your triplets, then you can watch out for them, and it saves you time. And let's go ahead and do a problem that demonstrates that. All right, so let's say that we have this figure. Um, so you've got uh, two triangles that are next to each other. They're both right, which is nice and easy. And we're trying to figure out what B is equal to. So this is a classic example of transferring information from one shape to another. So since we have two sides of the triangle on the right, let's go ahead and start there. So if you notice, there's a 9 and a 15 and then A, which we don't know. So we could use Pythagorean theorem to say 15 squared is equal to a squared plus 9 squared. Or we could notice that this potentially is a triplet. So um, we're looking for, remember, 3, 4, 5s and 5, 12, 13s. So a nice way to start is look at the hypotenuse. Is this divisible by either 13 or 5? So obviously not divisible by 13, but it is divisible by 5. So um, this guy here is 15 is 5 times 3, and then 9 is 3 times 3, so A is going to have to be 4 times 3. So because 15, oh, let's actually write this this way. Um, so if we're trying to figure out if this is a 3, 4, 5, we could say, okay, 3, 4, 5, and we know that 5 uh, times 3 is 15, and then 9 is 3 times 3, so then your other one would have to be 4 times 3, or 12. So A is now equal, and cross out our A, is now 12. Great. All right, the left-hand triangle, 5, 12, and if we know our triplets right off the bat, we can say, okay, great, uh, that is a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So B is equal to 13. Now again, if you don't remember the triplets on test day, if they slip your mind, um, it's okay. You can definitely use Pythagorean theorem. It's just that this takes you, you know, maybe 20 seconds on test day versus the one to two minutes that it'll take to actually go through and do Pythagorean theorem. So knowing your triplets is really helpful. Speaking of really helpful, special triangles are also very useful. So the first step is a 45-45-90. So 45, 45, 90 looks something about like that. Um, so obviously you've got your 45 and 45 degrees here, and then the 90th corner. So if you have one side of a 45, 45, 90, you can find the other two. And the reason for that is there's a proportion. So both of the angles, sorry, both of the sides across from 45 degrees are equal to x. And then you have x root 2 on the hypotenuse. For a 30, 60, 90, which looks something like this, um, with, again, the 90 degrees here, the 30 is your smallest degree measurement, and then the 60 at the bottom. 
And that also, if you know one side, you can find the others. So your smallest side, which of course is across from your smallest angle, so across from 30 is x. And then your next biggest side, which is across from 60, is x root 3. And then your hypotenuse has 2x on it. And one of the very silly ways, but helpful ways to remember uh, what goes where is that it is a hypotenuse, haha, <laughs> so aka there's twos on the hypotenuse. And then the other common problem is forgetting if x root 3 or 2x uh, goes on the hypotenuse and which one goes across from 60. Um, the easy way to remember that is that root 3 is less than root 4 because 2 is equal to root 4. So that's kind of the other way to remember where things go. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and let's use the special triangles to solve a problem. So let's say that I have the problem that is uh, in your top left hand corner of the screen. So I know there's 150 degrees on the outside, that's the external angle there. I know that 6 is the hypotenuse and I know that y is the base. And let's say it's asking us, you know, what is y. So we're going to try to figure out what is y. So the first thing is I would use my supplementary angles rule that we learned uh, when we were going over angles. And I would say, okay, I, if I'm trying to find what this angle here is, I know it's 180 minus 150. So that would equal 30 degrees. Okay, and knowing that this is 30 degrees, oh, and I should have drawn this in, because otherwise this is a little bit more difficult. So knowing this is 30 degrees and this is 90, that would make this top angle 60 degrees. So now we know we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, which is great because we know the ratios. So if you guys go ahead and remember the ratios, I can draw them out. So same 30, 60, 90 triangle. Our small is going to be at x. Our next biggest is x root 3. And then we've got 2x on the hypotenuse, or the hypotenuse. And um, so we're just going to go ahead and use these uh, side ratios to figure this out. So in this case, it would mean that 6 is equal to 2 times x, which means x would have to be equal to 3. And then we know that y is equivalent to x rad 3. So we would know that y is equal to 3 rad 3. And that would be our final answer. Okay, so um, up next we're going to go ahead and cover polygons and then move on to circles, uh, complex figures, and solids. So a lot of the stuff that you just learned in this video is going to apply in the next geometry video because most complex figure problems, a lot of the solids, and about half of the circles are actually going to use all of the triangle concepts that we just learned. So these triangle concepts are extremely important. So make sure that you guys remember them. And if you need to rewatch any part of the video, do that. But you're going to use these same concepts in the next video as well. So great job, everybody. And I will see you in the next video.